You know, I want to be 92. If, if it be his will, I want to get old too. And when I do get old, I want to keep on praising God. I don't want these young people to be doing their dance and all that stuff. Put me to shame. No. I want to be saying I'm not tired yet. So I'm going to admonish you guys. Ask y'all to stand up just one more time. Because somebody goes to Aqua Aerobics. Somebody be hitting the gym. Somebody walking in the morning time around the pet. Somebody doing something. So I want to encourage you tonight to stand on your feet and give God some praise. Father, Almighty God in heaven above, Lord, 
We come to you this evening just thanking you, Father God. Thanking you, Lord, for just being who you are, the God of our salvation. And we just give you praise, we give you honor, and we ask right now in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would just lead us through your word, oh God. That you begin to speak to us in a very powerful way, Lord. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, you move me away from all of this, Lord. And you speak only through me, oh God. That the people might hear your voice and that I too might I hear your voice from heaven. We just thank you. We praise you. We love you and we obey you. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I wasn't supposed to use this till woo, midway through, but dang. My God, I, don't I don't know what it is. I am not going to say what I think it is. But uh, it's real hot in here. Yeah, it's real hot in here. Amen. <laughs> it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. <laughs> amen, amen. But this week, uh, this um, whole month uh, of Women of the Cross, you know, the theme is God called me, man did. You know, and a lot of times when we look at that, we wonder, you know, is God really calling me? You know, but he is to a lot of things. But a lot of times we don't hear them, you know? Right. A lot of times we don't hear what God is saying. So the thing for this uh, this whole month has been God called me, man didn't. But tonight I want to focus in on when Jesus calls, mm. oh. come running. All right. Come on now. Yeah. When Jesus calls, come running. Amen. A lot of times when Jesus calls, many of us are not running to nothing. First and foremost, we don't even hear him. Is that you, Jesus? They don't even know. They can't even recognize his voice sometimes. But when Jesus calls, come run. I didn't put like a, a noun on there, like a pronoun, like you, me, I, them, they, whatever, you know. Uh, I said, come run. Because it has to be personal for you. When Jesus calls you, will you come run? When Jesus calls us, Will we come right? Yes. You know, th those are some of the things that we have to ask tonight. Yes. And I'm going to help you ask some of those questions just as soon as I put on these glasses because you know I can't see either. Right. Not only am I hot, boy, I can't see the Lord Jesus. Oh, by the grace, I guess. Let's by the Lord. grace, by the grace. Let's Amen. Lord. Amen. So I am coming out of Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 18 through 21. And if you guys can get your Bibles or your smartphones or your dumb phones, whatever you want to call it, whatever, we're going to get to those scriptures and just read these few little scriptures. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets. Going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, and John, his brother. In the boat was Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. You may be seated. I want to try to stand because I do have one more scripture, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. So we see here that this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. We see that he is, this is right after he was tempted. Uh, for those of you who are in the Bible study, Amen. lucky for you, you guys are already Bible scholars. You already know all about this. Amen. You got to see this uh, last week, so praise God. Amen. And we see that this is a time right after Jesus was tempted of the devil. So now he's getting ready to fulfill his ministry. He got he to he gotta get his crew together. Yes. A lot of times when we got to do something, we got to get a crew together. But we some funny people, boy. We don't want a lot of people working with us. I can do this by myself. I can do bad all by myself. Right? Isn't that what we tell ourselves? But we do need people around us. We need people who can help us. Amen? Amen. And as you look and you see Jesus as he's walking by the Sea of Galilee, he sees two brothers. Now, they got jobs. They work in their nine-to-fives, 
they fishermen. I don't know, yeah. five, five to nine, maybe. I, I don't know what their hours were. But they got a job and they're working, amen? Yeah. So they're working on their job. And Jesus sees them and says, hey, come follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. And immediately, the Bible says, yes. they came around. They didn't say, wait a minute. <laughs> got to put in my two-week notice. Uh, you know I still got my mortgage, and I want to turn in my car. And I got some kids back at the house. I got to fill up the refrigerator, make sure they good while I'm on this journey. No, immediately yes. they left. Amen? Yes. Immediately, immediately they dropped what they was doing, and they came a run. Yes. When Jesus calls, they came a run. Amen? Yes. You know, um, I was looking up the word uh, for immediately. And it says once, instantly, without intervening time or space. Meaning it happens instantly, immediately, mm. immediately. Right now, boom, it happens. Immediately, they left. Mm -hmm. They didn't think about it. They didn't question. They just fought. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Amen. I know y'all thinking, boy, that, that's just, they're two special people. Uh, they, they, they just followed just because. But let me just take you over here to Luke. And we're going to Luke chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. Luke chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. And it says, After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector. Dang, the IRS. <laughs> Named Levi, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Now this is the IRS. He left all the tax forms on the table and said, I'm a following. Immediately, you left everything. He left everything so that he could follow Jesus. Amen. So that begins to make me wonder, why is it that when Jesus calls us, we don't immediately leave? A lot of times we take our time about everything. Now this is my favorite one. And I've been doing this a little while. Sister Rome, Brother Rome, Pastor Rome, Sister Rome, they, they know me because I just started out with them many, many years ago. So I've been on this journey for a little while. This, this really gets me. The Lord has told me <laughs> that you should be doing this in the church. I really believe you'll be great at this. Person's response. Let me pray about it. <laughs> Let me pray about it. Why you got to pray about something that God wants you to do? If Jesus himself came down from heaven and called some people, they'd be saying to him, let me pray about it. <laughs> Why is it? Why can't we just do when God calls? Why do we have to wait or think or pray or ponder or sit or go through this or go through that or act like this or act like that? Why do we have to do that? Why can't we just immediately go? Well, I'm glad you guys asked. <laughs> One of the reasons is because we don't really believe that he's calling us. Because a lot of times we can't hear his voice. But I am going to tell you this. When your friend calls you for brunch, hey girl, you want to go out for lunch? I got this really great spot and we can really hang out and have mimosas and really have a good time. Sorry, this is my bad girl voice, okay? We can have a really great time. What do you do? You don't say, uh, let me pray about it. Uh, let me think about it. Uh, let me ponder it. Girl, no, what time? Well, well, I'll be there. Right? When your job calls you and says, hey, uh, we need you to work uh, tomorrow. I know it's a day off, but uh, we need you to work. It's triple, 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 double overtime. Oh, what time? What time do you want me to come right now? I'm ready. I'm ready. You're not saying, let me think about it. Uh, let me fix my stuff. I got to make my bed. The dog needs to be washed. No, you go do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Immediately it says that they went when Jesus calls. Yeah. Why is it that we don't? 
Now I'm even gonna, I'm gonna go a little place with this here. Us women, when man calls you, <laughs> say, hey, hey, got this nice little spot, I want you to come hang out with me for a couple hours. It's gonna be nice. Man, we in the shower, we putting on makeup, we got our best perfume on, we getting that dress that's gonna make us look skinny. We going, because we enjoy ourselves, right? Same thing for the men. We don't be, the, the women don't be saying, ah, unless they don't like them. Man, that's your clue, okay? If she put you off, maybe she ain't really that into you. But usually if she is, she gonna go on and do it. Same thing for the men. A woman tell you, hey, how you doing? You know, when you come on, you know, you wanna go out to do this, go to movies or whatever, I ain't gonna say Netflix and chill because that's the wrong, that's, that's the wrong thing. We don't want that, no, no, no. People out there, no, you don't want a Netflix and chill. Besides, Netflix is too high, it'll raise the price. No, no, no. But when they do that, you, you, you go ahead, you go, you don't say, let me pray about it. I'm going to see if this is what the Lord wants me to do. You are not saying that. So why is it when God tells you something, you want to automatically, now you don't got sanctified it. Oh, let me pray about everything. Let me pray about it all. Like, you're not praying about half the things you do. So why, all of a sudden now with somebody, when God through somebody tells you, Hey, look, I need you to do X, Y, and Z because I know this will be good for the kingdom. Why all of a sudden now you want to get all like, uh, 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 let me pray about it. No! You don't need to pray about it. Just do it. Amen. What does Nike say? Just do it. That's right. That's right. Made a fortune off of it. Just do it. Amen. And that's the way we have to be. We just got to do it. Amen. We just got to do what God has called us to do. Amen. And a lot of times the reason why we don't do what God has called us to do, number one is we haven't heard his voice. Right. You can't hear his voice if you're always watching TV. Now, come on, come on. I'm going to say this because yeah. somebody I know watches a lot of TV. Yeah. But they say that God, they can hear God through that. They tune out the TV. And you know what? I'm inclined to believe him. Because I think he tuned me out too. So I believe that maybe, you know, he is able to do that. Because I'll be talking blah, 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 blah. And I'm sure he thinks I sound like uh, Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 I'm sure that's what he hears. I'm just blah, 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 blah. Wah, 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 wah. So, but I'm, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is this. That because we have so many things that are distracting us, outside influences, yeah. we've got yeah. social media, we got our friends, we got our family, we got the world, we got all these things that always crowding into our our space, right? Yeah. right? Our little personal space is always, you know, they tell us right now during COVID, six feet, right? Ain't nobody six feet, they all up on you. I mean, yeah, I you gonna pay for this too? <laughs> I mean, man, you all up on top of me. Did COVID go away? You know, but what am I saying? I'm saying that we got so much stuff in our personal space that God can't even fit in there because they, it, it, it's like this. He's like, well, dang, I can't even get in there. How am I going to get in? I can't even fit in there. You got so much stuff. I can't even, you can't even hear me talk to you because you got so much stuff there. So how can we, how can we do, what can we do? How can we solve that? You know, what can we do to hopefully get that space, get those things out of our life, all that clutter? You know, the Bible says, Paul says, every sin and every weight that would so easily beset me. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. Uh, but you guys get the gist of it. I'm doing a paraphrase. But it's, it's the weight that we have. These, these weights that we be carrying around that causes us not to get that close to God. Or not allow him into our space. Because we, we allow too much stuff around us. Too many things are, are crowding our space. So you know I was thinking. And I, I'm going to give this to you. Maybe, you know, on Sunday, take one hour, other than church, one hour to maybe you washing the dishes or maybe you like to clean, uh, you know, or maybe you like to do something. Why not put on Pandora and play Christian music? 
Now, you know, Christian music is is not like like we used to play Christian music. Christian music done evolved and advanced. They got gospel rap. Shoot, I think they got gangster gospel holy rap. You know, I, that's what I think. Because some of them would be I'd be like, damn. So, put on something like that to kind of get your mind clear and start thinking more about the things of God. Because when we're always crowding our minds with the things of this world, it, it can become just overwhelming and we can't yeah. hear God speak yeah. to us. Come on, come on. But if we would just give him a chance, you know, I had thought once and I mentioned this to the Bible study one time, I said, you know, if we went to like Death Valley or to the Mojave Desert uh-huh. where it's quiet, ain't uh-huh. nothing over there. Nothing. I don't even think you get cell service. I don't know, I've never been to the Mojave Desert. Hey. I've never been to the Death Valley point. either. Yep. But the point is, I'm sure that the cell service is not that good. Unless you and I don't know. But I'm going to say that the cell service is probably not that good. So you would be able to really hear God's voice in a very clear and distinct way. And that's the way we have to do even here when we are amongst uh, the world and all the crowding and all the distractions and things like that. We've got to be able to hear God's voice. Amen? So I would encourage you to try that. Because... You're never going to know what to do and you're never going to hear his voice if you don't get all that clutter out of the way. Amen. Amen. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that even when God is calling us to do something and even when Jesus says, okay, I want you to quit your job. I want you to quit your job and start something else. Nine times out of ten, a lot of us are saying, Ugh, yeah. that's kind of hard. I like this job. I like these people. They nice. They go to brunch. <laughs> Every weekend, we have mimosas. I, I really enjoy it. So I don't want to leave my job, Lord. But Jesus called you. And what we're doing is we're being disobedient. And that's what I talked about earlier when I said how when people will come to you and tell you something that you need to do for the Lord, how we're so quick to say, you know, oh, let me pray about it. Oh, let me think about it. Let me do this. Let me do that. You know, when if, if you knew and you understood and you heard God's voice and you recognize that that was his voice, you would know that this would be good for the kingdom. Now, if somebody's asking you to do something that is contrary to the kingdom, obviously you might want to decline that offer or you might want to decline that uh, request. But immediately you would want to decline that. But some people probably think, hmm, really? Let me see. They might be thinking about it, amen? But we want to try our best to, to do when God is bringing someone before us, when God is, is calling you to do something, you want to do it immediately. Yeah. You want to drop everything that you have and do exactly what God has called you to do. Yeah. When you look at uh, Levi, right, he's a tax collector. I made a joke about the IRS because, you know, it is tax season. Uh, but he left everything he had right then and there. To do exactly when Jesus called him, he wanted to do exactly what God called him to do. He didn't, he didn't think about it. He didn't wait. They left immediately. Yes. So it's up to us women to do things immediately. Immediately, men and women. Immediately, when God is calling you to do something, you need to do it immediately. Start believing God immediately. Start thinking about God immediately. Start doing things for Him immediately. When He's calling you to do things, it's important that we do it right now. You know, it was said that, that, you know, tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So just think about all the missed opportunities you've had. God has probably called you to do a lot of things, and we did that. I, I, I'm going to think about it. I'll pray about it. I, I'm not sure. Let me wait. Let me wait. Just think, if Peter and his brother Andrew, if they would have said, ah, oh, you know, we're working right now. Why don't you come back, you know, in a couple of days after we get off of work, after we do this last catch or whatever the case may be, what would have happened? All right. They would have missed their opportunity to be a part of something Grand. 
Right. Think about it. That was over 2,000 years ago. Amen. We're still talking about them. Okay. <laughs> we still saying their name. We still reading them in the book. Right? We still uh, trying to be like them in some ways. We still making reference to them and how they were and what they did. After all of these years. Now just think if they would have missed that opportunity to do that. All right. Just think about that. All right. Think about your own life, where you are right now, the age you are, the position you're in right now, the season you're in right now, yes. and think to yourself, what if God were to walk through that door and call me to do something? Pick up all your goods and go to Ukraine. What? <laughs> right now? <laughs> I, think, I think you said somebody else's name, not mine. Not me, not me. But what, what an opportunity. What if you could be the one that would be able to witness to so many people that are in despair right now, dealing with what they're dealing with? What if your name was a name that they would talk about years and years and years from now about the good work that you did over there? All right, yes. Think about that. But you know what, it's kind of sad because we don't think that far. Like I said, we can think about brunch, our jobs, a few little kids we got, you know. We don't think past where we are. And I'm gonna tell you, and I, I know this to be a fact, that's a ploy from the devil. That's the enemy trying to distract you so that you won't do exactly what he's called you to do. That's why you can only think right here. You can't think any further. You can't think about what's way over there. Because that's that, that requires, guess what? Too much faith. Too much faith to believe God to have you do something bigger and greater than yourself. It's important that we realize that there's so much more for us to do. There's so much more, there's so much more of an impact that we can make on other people's lives. There's so much more that we can do just in our own little sphere. You know, the sister talked about her grandkids. When I knew her, she ain't had no grandkids. Her kids was little like mine. But now she's got grandkids. And if the Lord says the same, she'll have great grandkids. Amen. But guess what? It's important that we pray for those things that are way up above. Way up above. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you tonight. You know, when Jesus calls you, I want you to move immediately. Stop waiting. Stop wasting time. Because that's what we're doing. If this pandemic hasn't taught you anything, Two years, we stayed at home. I know I did. <laughs> Two years, we ain't going visit nobody. Well, some people were. We not going out. We barely going to the store. We need some Clorox wipes. Uh, dang, I need another roll of toilet paper. Uh, where the lights are? Man, I can't see the lights off. Where the lights are at? Right? If this pandemic hasn't shown you anything, That's right. it's that you need to act immediately. Yeah. Stop waiting. Stop waiting for the so-called opportune time. When is opportune time? If God has called you, if Jesus has called you to do something, you need to do it now. Don't wait. Don't wait. If God has called you to a different career, I said God, not you. If God has called you to a different career, go do it. If God has told you to go back to school, go do it. If God has told you to be a part of a certain ministry, go do it. If God has called you to preach the gospel, go do it. If God has called you to sing and praise God, go do it. Why are you waiting? I know we say, oh, I'm only 25 years old. <laughs> you know, I have plenty of time to do stuff. No, you don't. Again, 
again, I said, these men did not wait till they got a certain age. I don't know how old Peter was. Maybe some of the Bible scholars do. I don't know. I don't know how old he was. But he was old enough to have a job and a wife and some kids and a mother-in-law. So I said, he might have been okay on you know, he had some, some people he was taking care of, you know, and the chew, man. This, this, uh, if I came home and said, I ain't got my portion of the rent, I can't pay my bills, my husband's going to be looking at me like, what? Where you at? Uh, I ain't got it this month. I, you know, so I'm sure when he left, all those things had to be a factor. But he didn't even think about all of that because he knew God, this is it. He knew God would supply. This man was on a journey for three years. He wasn't at home. He was on a business trip. Right? He wasn't even there for three years. But did his wife go hungry? Did his mother-in-law not get here? Did the kids get fed? Did the house payment? Did the, did the mortgage? Did it foreclose on him? No. Everything kept going. Why? Because immediately when Jesus called, he went. Yes. He did exactly what God said. And as a result, God provided. Amen. So if God is calling you to do something, know you me. That he will, I said it, he will provide. He will provide. And for you that might say, well, I'm a little too old for all that. No, you're not. God might be saying, this is the best season of your life. Amen. It's time for you to do things you never thought you could do. Right. It's time for you to explore things you never thought you could. Yes. Do you know when Jesus calls you to do something, yes. he'll provide for you. Yes. He'll make a way out of absolutely no way. Yes. He'll give you exactly what you stand in need of. Yes. He'll provide whatever it is that you need. Witness. I ain't worked for three years, okay? I ain't worked for three years. I ain't never missed a meal. I ain't never missed a bill. I ain't never missed a night of sleep because I was sleeping on the street. No, none of that. God provided. Immediately, I left my job. When God said, leave your job, immediately I left my job. I tried to leave as quick as I could, but you know, I had to, had to do a couple things with that paperwork. So I, did, I couldn't just walk off. I would have liked to, but God was like, no, nah, just do your paperwork. But immediately I left. You know, and I'm, I'm telling you this, and I don't care what nobody say. I'll keep on saying it to the day I die. Because I know how good God is. I know if you hear the voice of the Lord. I know when Jesus calls. And immediately, if you do what he says, he will provide. Because he called me. Don't leave no sooner than November and no later than February. What happened in 2020? March of 2020. We had the pandemic. What? God said, come on now. God told me. I got you. You're not going to be there when this thing break out. I'm going to have you at home with your husband and your son and your daughter because she's going to work from home. I want to work from home, Lord. Immediately you're going to be working from home. And that's the way we have to be when it comes to the Lord. Immediately we got to get and do exactly what he says. And the only way we're going to do those things is in this world. You won't know nothing about what he's saying if you ain't reading this word. If you ain't spending time with him. If you're not looking to the Lord to guide you. If you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Right? He said he'll, he'll bring back all, all things back to your remembrance whatsoever he said. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Jesus, immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. If you don't remember anything else, I want you to remember immediately. Amen. Whatever's going on in your life right now, yeah. wherever you are in your walk, 
Whatever you're dealing with, I want to encourage you to know immediately if God calls you, if Jesus calls you, and I, I want to be specific. I want to say Jesus. When Jesus calls you, you got to come running. Because there's some work that he wants you to do for the earth. There's some things he wants you to accomplish before you leave this earth. And what you want to do when you leave this earth, you want to leave empty, Amen. not full. Oh, y'all didn't understand that. Did oh, 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 boy. You want to leave empty. Everything you got, you want it out. You want to put it out there. You want to put it out there in the atmosphere. You want to witness to people. You want your people to be saved. You want to pray for people. You want to do. You want to put it out there. You don't want to hold it in. Keep all that Bible study, all that word all in you. You want to keep all that in you? You want to get it out? Ask God to show you there's somebody that's a novice in the word and need you to train them. Talk to them about it. And immediately. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's give God a hand for you.